program was set up to uh, locate, monitor, um, and help with the uh, animal population within the city. Um, a lot of people have cats that uh, live outside. They become feral, unadoptable, um, and it's sort of inhumane just to euthanize them because of so, especially when you have uh, good people out there that are willing to feed them, house them, not so much house them inside, but provide them like animal shelters outside from the elements. Um, and what the program consists of, if you see a feral cat um, or a cat, you don't even know if it's feral, you give someone like me a call um, here at the station. My number is 862-1430 um, and I'll go check it out, the situation. And if it is like a feral cat, um, we have volunteers that uh, go out and they'll trap the cats. They'll get them checked out health-wise. Um, they'll get them all the vaccinations. They'll get them spayed. They'll get them neutered. But then they get released back to the area, um, especially those areas where somebody's there that's going to be feeding them on a, on a regular basis. Susan Haywood is an angel. She does it all voluntary, um, you know, and she sp spends a lot of time. And she's helped hundreds of cats. My name's Susan Haywood and I've been living in Peekskill for like the last, since 1980. And um, I've been working with rescue, mostly cats, since 1998. And that's when I was first introduced to feral cats and their plight and studied what you could do about it. A lot of the rescue groups um, that I worked with would take friendly cats, kittens, um, but nobody was really addressing the feral cat situation. And, you know, as cats can have three litters a year, um, one unspayed female, you really can have a lot of cats. Yeah. And, um, that, and I had learned about um, a procedure called trap, neuter, return. And um, I studied it and it said this was the best way to handle feral cats. I volunteer at the SPCA every Monday. I bring the cats to get uh, spayed, neutered. They, it includes a rabies vaccine. And then the left ear, um, the tip of the left ear is uh, made level. It's cut off. And it's nationally the symbol that a cat has been spayed, neutered, and vaccinated. The whole purpose of the program is to maintain the animals over there but specifically to make sure that they don't have kittens every year. One unspayed female have two litters a year, six kittens per litter, five kittens per litter, four kittens per litter even. I mean, year after year, that's just hundreds of cats. When I first get to a colony, um, it's, uh, they will look poorly. Um, they are, uh, the unneutered males have wounds, they fight. Um, the females, if they've gone through so many pregnancies, start to look very bedraggled. They usually have fleas. Um, but once you get everybody spayed and neutered, and I just feed once a day, these cats thrive. They do so well. They, once they're put back, they won't let other cats move into their territory. SPCA took them in. Vanessa fostered this cat and then adopted it through the SPCA. You know, she got spayed and neutered, she got wormed, she got um, vaccines, Great. and she's a beautiful girl. And she was yeah. microchipped. It was, it was a pretty simple procedure. Um, Sue, who has been really essential in this whole process, was really great about picking her up. Um, Leslie has been also a, a great ally in this process, making sure that we've been getting her to her appointments. Uh, when I first got her, she was only four weeks old, so she was very small, um, so she couldn't be spayed um, at the moment, nor could she, 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 was too, she was too young to get any shots. Um, but Sue would come and pick her up in the morning, take her uh, to her appointments at SPCA and Briarcliff, then drop her off in the afternoon. Um, she made sure that I knew kind of every step of the way, the paperwork I needed to fill out, um, and, and that I was comfortable with the whole process along the way. I think it's crucial uh, for our community, especially our, our urban community, where we do have a lot of stray cats um, kind of roaming around. It's, it's so important that we have this relationship with the SPCA um, so they can take these cats in, so we can have 
kind of a better control over our cat population. So right now we're in the Simpson Clinic at the SPCA of Westchester and we've had our clinic open since 1983. I think up till this year we've done about 65,000 spay and neuters and low cost wellness visits uh, for people that otherwise wouldn't be able to afford it. And our feral cat program, our trap, neuter, return uh, program is uh, been huge in the community because we probably spay and neuter somewhere between anywhere from three to 500 feral cats a year. And we've been doing that since the clinic was open. So trying to put a dent into the population because these are all cats that um, there's just not enough homes for. So uh, people like Susan have been uh, wonderful in the community, um, getting other volunteers involved to do trap, neuter, return um, so that we have less homeless cats in Westchester. Okay. And we also want to see our cats going to the right homes, to good families. Um, there are so many cats out there, especially, um, I, I didn't know this before I adopted Kati, but black cats are actually the hardest to, um, to be adopted. Uh, they're, they're the least to be adopted, so that was another reason why I, I really wanted to take her in. And um, what SPCA is doing for communities like Peekskill and other communities throughout Westchester is, is, is really incredible and, and critical in making sure that we're, we're keeping our cat populations down. And, um, and really just increasing the quality of life for everyone in, in our community. We actually hosted a, a barbecue for the residents of the Jam Peak Shelter one night and I had invited the, the council if they wanted to come and meet with them and Vanessa was one of the people who came and she was sitting at the table with the folks from Jam Peak and they were all holding the kittens or whatever and she said, oh, can I see? So somebody handed her the black kitten well, that, the black kitten went home with her. <laughs> she, she was not parting with that kitten. It was instant love, her and that kitten. It was the funniest thing. And she'd never had an animal before. I, I think that the program that Susan does is extremely important to the city of Peaksdale. Number one, it helps mouse control, <laughs> which I don't know if people even talk about that. In addition to being difficult to do, it's also an expensive proposition. You gotta buy all this food for cats you didn't have. In my case, it was not a problem, but for a lot of people, I know they can't do that. Come on. This is Boy. Boy showed up about the same time as the cats that Susan was talking about, the mother cat. The mother cat was living over there. So I thought maybe he was Papa, but I don't think he was. But he's been here ever since. He just so he goes inside. made himself at home. He goes inside sometimes. In my garage. In garage. I can't have him upstairs because my cat freaks out at him. Right. Any of my girls in here? Oh, wow. they're all in there. Sorry, girls. One just ran. Three of them. <laughs> Look, I have three beds in here. They have lights that heat the, it heats the room. Yeah. These beds are really too big, but they don't really have smaller beds. So there's three of them, Mama and the two girls, which is why I got this, because it had uh, enough space. It just has a rubber door, and there's a bed. But he's, he's not used to it yet, so he won't go in by himself. He knows he can come out, but uh, I realize everybody may not be able to afford cat condos for things, but I really would encourage anybody who finds a beautiful animal like this to first call either Susan or Wendell at Animal Control to get them spayed and neutered, and then if you can keep them in your neighborhood, and if you just feed them, they're beautiful. Call, call me here at the station. My office number is 862-1430. If you can't remember that, 737-8000, the police department. They'll get me on the radio wherever I am within the city.